Hey everyone and welcome to tonight's video. I'm out here on what I'm going to refer to as the frozen beach and the reason for it is because I need a really low horizon in order to see the conjunction. Now where I'm located in my observatory I can't see this low so I actually do have to come out here to do it and I decided to go with the smaller setup simply because lugging everything down here getting it properly aligned the north star etc was a major undertaking and I wasn't quite sure that it was going to be clear tonight. Uh, apparently some clouds were in the forecast. They've magically disappeared. So Saturn and Jupiter are really close to each other, but they haven't quite got to that point where they're actually touching uh, from a sort of a naked eye view without any real magnification. Um, with magnification, obviously we're still gonna see them separated because they are only gonna get about six arc seconds close to each other. But I'm doing it tonight because it's also clear and it's got forecast for snow coming up and uh, that generally results in clouds so this is a get it while you can situation maybe the day of i will drag everything down here clear um, just for that extra go but if i brought the larger telescope i actually wouldn't see everything because it would be too too uh mag too much magnification so i currently have the nikon z6 attached to my 300 millimeter telephoto lens and i have the 1.7 adapter in the middle. This gives me a significant amount of magnification so that I can see Saturn, Jupiter, and the moons with three separate exposures. There is a bit of surface detail in Jupiter. It simply is that big. It's not amazing, but it's still there. And Saturn looks decently where I can see the rings, I can see the planet, and I can tell that it actually is Saturn versus a blob. And there are several moons, especially around Jupiter, that are very visible. This is something to keep in mind if you are doing it on the day of the conjunction is that Saturn, Jupiter, and the moons of Jupiter and the moons of Saturn are all at different light levels. So you're going to have to really overexpose Jupiter in order to get any of the detail from the rest of the uh, planets and bodies, etc. that are in the frame. I ended up doing this with a couple different settings and it ended up turning out pretty well as you can see in this photo here. And obviously if I was a bit of a cheat I could always just Photoshop them closer although the moons in orbit will actually change position between now and then. There's a certain point of the layman might say, wow, that's a cool conjunction photo, but any actual astrophotographer is going to know that you move things around because the moons are going to be in the wrong location. Unless you get really creative and start moving moons, but don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Either you get it or you don't. It's one of those things with uh, astronomy. That's the nature of the hobby. Uh, also up behind me, hopefully you can see it, is the moon. Uh, right now it's a lovely crescent. It's the starting of a new cycle. Uh, I will post a photo of that uh, for you guys to enjoy, but you know, it comes around once a month, so not a huge, you know, loss if you miss it or not miss it, etc. But I've been sort of watching the lunar cycle recently just for fun because it's sort of one of those things of I've never actually done a lot of lunar uh, astrophotography, and I'm starting to think maybe I should start looking a little bit closer at our nearest celestial neighbor. So that's all for me. I do hope that you can get the uh, conjunction the day of, which is December 21st, uh, 2020. And if you can't, try to get the day before or the day after. But as always, clear skies and thanks for watching.